This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. on the south today. The first funerals of the four teens killed in a horrific crash in Invercargill have been held. The bones of an elephant seal get pieced together at Otago Museum for the school holidays. And what would you call a giant pile-driving hammer? Dunedinites get to name a new piece of equipment. Good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. The first services for the young victims of last Friday's tragic road accident in Invercargill have been held. In Invercargill, a large crowd spilled out of Nahoewha Marae this morning at the Tangihanga for 17-year-old Omarahuato Tafai. The 17-year-old died after the ute he was in collided with a concrete truck in Queen's Drive last Friday afternoon. Three 16-year-old friends, Connor Steele, Indica Rousey and Kaya Kennedy also died at the scene. Friends in Fano performed a haka in his honour. And this afternoon in Bluff, hundreds gathered to remember the life of Connor Steele, a young man described as passionate about sports, hunting and fishing. His coffin was decorated with handwritten tribute messages and a haka was performed at the Bluff Rugby Club. Following the service, Connor's coffin was taken to Green Park Cemetery on the back of a ute. Funerals for the other two teens will be held over the next few days. Four people were injured, one critically, after a van rolled near Luggett in central Otago yesterday afternoon. The single vehicle crash blocked Kane Road at Hawea Flat, just north of the Red Bridge, shortly before 4pm yesterday. One person suffered critical injuries in the vehicle accident and was airlifted to Christchurch Hospital. Another person in a serious condition and two people in moderate conditions were airlifted to Dunedin Hospital. One of the car's occupants was ejected from the vehicle in the crash. Adults and children had the chance to examine an elephant seal skeleton close up this week at Otago Museum. The bones were collected from an elephant seal that died at Long Beach a decade ago. A treat for curious visitors to the Otago Museum. The bones of an exceptionally large elephant seal were on display to the public yesterday like a giant jigsaw puzzle in the museum's atrium. Natural science curator Emma Burns says the skeleton is just one of several marine mammals in the museum's collection. Also on show were skeletal remains of a leopard seal, New Zealand fur seal and a sea lion to help people compare the sizes of the different marine mammals. We've got another parts of the seal collection out of the, the stores to show people the differences and the diversity of life that occurs off our coast. Elephant seals can easily dive to a depth of one and a half kilometres, holding their breath for well over an hour. Male elephant seals weigh up to ten times more than females, with their name coming from the large nose of the adult males. This animal was found dead at Dunedin's Long Beach about ten years ago. Its remains were retrieved by museum staff and cleaned before being put into storage. Natural Science Collection Manager Cody Phillips says the team is now checking to see if any bones are missing. So what we do is we lay it all out so that we can see the whole animal. And so this guy here, we're assuming he's lying on his tummy on the ground. And so we know left and right go on certain sides of the spine. And so what we're doing is we're laying out every single bone in the way it would be if it was an actual complete animal. The skeleton will remain at the museum for future research, with yesterday's work helping catalogue it. A big part of my job is knowing what's in the collection and, and knowing where it is at all times. And so it's really important for me to know if a researcher says I want the left femur of an elephant seal, I can say this guy has or has not got a left femur. The event was held as part of the Wild Dunedin Festival, with Otago Museum saying the bones could well be put back together to be displayed in the future. In Dunedin, the South today. The road between Dunedin and Port Chalmers was partially closed this afternoon after a crash between two vehicles. 
Police say the two cars crashed in St Leonard's shortly after midday at the intersection of State Highway 88 and Finch Street. The front of a red Suzuki and the rear of a brown Mini Cooper received damage in the accident. One person was trapped and had to be extracted from their vehicle before being attended to by St John's staff. Firefighters directed traffic while the road was partially blocked. There's more progress at the site for the new Dunedin Hospital projects, with a 14-ton hammer arriving on site to drive in the piles for the building. The large red tool was custom-built especially for this project, with the team digging for a new name. Forget Bambi, this pile driver could easily be called Thumper. That's just one of the names already suggested for this 14-ton big red hammer, which has an important job to do as part of the new Dunedin Hospital build. Uh, so it's a, a pile-driving hammer. It uh, goes down into the piles um, and we lift it up three metres and, and drop it, which will um, push the piles into the ground. The almost four-metre-long lead hammer was made especially for this construction project. Site engineer Todd Shillow's unsure just how loud the pile driving will be, with the team hoping to drive one pile in per day. Uh, so on this site, which is the, the Wilson uh, car park site, uh, we've got 78 piles. Uh, and then on the Cadbury site, we've got another 350 odd. The hammer will be raised about three metres into the air before each use, with a heavy weight slamming each pile into the ground. The project's set to start in mid-May and take about nine months to complete across the two sites. Uh, so stage one, which is the Wilson car parks, uh, between two and three months um, is what we've got scheduled. Um, and then uh, on the Cadbury site, we're looking at about six months. And those behind the project are looking for a new quirky name for the machine. Although Sherlow's staying away from the naming game. <laughs> nah, it's uh, just, just the hammer for me. Otago Daily Times readers are able to share their ideas for the Chugga 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 Big Red Hammer's name via email or on the ODT's Facebook page. In Dunedin, the South Today. FA Arkane, still to come on the South Today. An early morning ram raid in Christchurch destroys more than $20,000 worth of alcohol. And a well-known choreographer prepares to share his knowledge tomorrow on World Dance Day. John's gone ape. John's made it easy to get the furniture you want today with 36 months interest free. <laughs> Johnny's gone bananas. And my mate John. Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need. From answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Hi, we're a concern on Targo. Age Concern Otago hosts a multitude of social activity, including little walks. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. 
Mom Map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Spark your joy with Jazz, the next generation from Honda. Welcome back. Early morning bakery workers in Christchurch have thwarted a pair of ram raiders after they struck at a nearby liquor store. However, the intentional crash smashed rows of bottled alcohol for sale, causing $20,000 in stock loss alone. This dramatic CCTV footage shows brazen thieves attempting a ram raid on a thirsty liquor store in the Christchurch suburb of Huntsbury. Glass and bottles went flying as a car with two male occupants smashed through the front of the store early on Wednesday morning. The noise alerted two nearby bakery workers who went to investigate. Erna bakery owner Murray Eden initially thought it was a car crash, but when the pair ran outside they saw a car reversing out of the liquor store. He says the thieves seemed surprised that someone was actually there, forcing them to hide tail it and drive away from the scene empty-handed. Police are investigating. In Christchurch, the South today. Emergency services were called to the Octagon this morning to investigate a strong smell of gas in central Dunedin. Fire and Emergency New Zealand says two crews from Willowbank and Dunedin City stations were sent to Lower Stewart Street just before 9 o'clock this morning. Buildings and businesses in the area were checked. Energy company Genesis later confirmed it had identified a small gas leak. The company says the gas supply was isolated while it was fixed and no customers were affected. Today is International Workers Memorial Day, when people who've lost their lives at work are remembered worldwide. About 50 people took part in a sombre ceremony at Dunedin's Workers Memorial around midday. Maritime Union's spokesman Victor Billet spoke about two port workers who died at work this month in Auckland and at Welling uh, Littleton. Rather. And Tari MP Ingrid Leary paid tribute to local union stalwart Jim Kelly, who passed away last December. He would have phoned me up and with his broad Scottish accent would have demanded I come round for a cuppa, a quick cuppa that would have taken about two hours, as he proceeded to tell me all the reasons why it was wrong to have workers in that situation, what we could do about it, what would have happened in his day and everything else that we needed to discuss as union and as labour together. Jim Kelly's daughter Lisa was visibly moved at the event, laying a wreath in her father's memory and taking part in the placing of crosses. Dunedin City Councillor Jim O'Malley gave a passionate speech, saying employees had the right to come home from work well and alive at the end of each day. During 2020, 67 people lost their lives at work in New Zealand. Celebrated New Zealand dancer and choreographer Michael pa Paraminta has returned to Dunedin to take up the Caroline Plummer Dance Fellowship at Otago University. Paraminta's covered a wide range of dance styles in his long career. His current studies are taking him to the origins of the Appalachian flat foot dancing with the choreographer ready to show Dunedinites how they too can dance. Putting one's best foot forward. You could never accuse internationally renowned dancer and choreographer Michael Parmenter of having flat feet. But it's the dance style of flat footing that the New Zealand artist is planning to share with Dunedinites on Friday at Toitu Otago Settlers Museum to mark World Dance Day. And this is something that I uh, took on as a personal project during the first lockdown in Auckland. I, I needed a dance form that I could do in my living room. So I got a, an old table to, tabletop and put it on the ground and started learning uh, flat footing. Parmenter studied dance at Otago University in the late 1970s before heading overseas. He's studied, danced, choreographed and taught contemporary dance around the globe, but says concentrating on his feet and keeping time with them was a step in a new direction. In contemporary dance in particular we do stuff with our whole body and really the feet are there for locomoting us but they're not the event themselves. He's back in Dunedin to take up the Caroline Plummer Fellowship in Community Dance at Otago University. Another genre of dance the arts fellow is studying is known as bell folk. 
which he reckons will be useful for getting the sometimes dance shy Dunedin crowd off their backsides and onto their feet. The rationales behind Balfolk was to make regional and traditional dancers accessible to as many people as possible. So a lot of the dancers in Balfolk have been simplified a little bit and they are not complex dances with choreography, they are simple structures which give room and permission for improvisation. So from my perspective they are an excellent way to get beginners up on the floor. Dunedin Knights interested in shaking off some inhibitions can enjoy a free masterclass with Michael Parmenter at Toitu's Josephine Foyer on Friday afternoon. In Dunedin, the South Today. FI Yarkane after the break on the South today. Aaron Smith returns as Highlanders captain for their historic Super Rugby game in Suva. And we take a look at the weather ahead of the weekend. Living Well Disability Resource Centre, a not-for-profit charitable organisation and your one-stop shop for information and resources to help you retain independence. We offer a wide range of assistive products from jar openers to mobility scooters and provide assessments for Total Mobility, the half-price taxi scheme. Come and see the friendly team. You'll find us on the corner of George and Bath Streets, ground floor of Burns House. Johnny's gone bananas! My mate John's gone ape! Check out Dunedin's biggest range of furniture and beds at Dunedin's lowest prices. Plus, get expert knowledge and unbeatable service. <laughs> Johnny's gone bananas! Plus, John's made it easy to get the furniture you want today with 36 months interest-free. <laughs> Johnny's gone bananas! On this weekend at John's Furniture Warehouse, Stafford Street, and online at mymatejohn.co.nz. That furniture from Stafford Street and my mate John. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Hi, my name's Matt and I'm the Dines Group CEO. Dines is a company that's focused on selling logistics solutions to its customers. We're passionate about selling efficiency and we've been selling efficiency for over 50 years now. Tanakwe, welcome back. The Highlanders are set to play the Fiji and Drua for the first time this Saturday. The match at the ANZ National Stadium in Suva will be the first home game for the Fiji side this Super Rugby Pacific season. 
Aaron Smith will return to the side after being unavailable last weekend against the Brumbies. The Highlanders captain says the team are excited about the historical match. A really big game for us, critical in our season, but also just to be a part of a bit of history. Um, it's really special to get over here. We've been um, looked after really well. The people here are lovely. And um, I think they're just going to really enjoy a real awesome game on Saturday night. And um, yeah, I think our boys are really excited about the challenge. Skating enthusiasts from across the South Island descended on Invercargill recently for the city's first major roller derby competition. The local team, named Southernmost Skaters, faced off against visiting teams from Queenstown, Christchurch, Nelson and Dunedin. Roller derby is a contact sport played by two teams of five members each, all roller skating in the same direction on a track. Games consist of a series of short races where both teams select a skater to score points by lapping members of the opposing team. Invercargill coach Kim Howden says it was exciting to host the city's first competition. She was attracted to this uh, sport due to its positivity and the chance to learn something new. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. The first two funerals of the four teens killed in a horrific crash last Friday in Invercargill have been held. The bones of a large elephant seal get laid out at Otago Museum as a school holiday event, winding up the Wild Dunedin Festival. And what would you call a giant pile-driving hammer? Dunedinites get the chance to name a new piece of equipment, helping with the Dunedin Hospital build. And now time for a look at tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Molnap. Looking at the situation, a large anti-cyclone will take its time moving over the South Island in the next few days, bringing a spell of fine weather. Heading to the top of the South Island first, cloudy with light winds tomorrow and a high of 17 for Nelson. Greymouth will be cloudy to start, then will reach 18 degrees, while Christchurch wakes up to fog, light winds throughout the day, warming up to 16. To our southern towns now, fine with light winds through here. Valclutha and the Catlins will get 15, while Gore and Lumsden will be slightly warmer with 16 degrees. Travelling westwards to the central lakes area, nice and fine. Alexandra, Queenstown and Wanaka can all expect 18 degrees and light winds. Tiano will be classically autumnal too with 15 degrees. Looking at the northern towns next, Timaru and Awamaru are both in for a fine day with light east to northeasterlies and highs of 15 or 16. Omarama and Twaizu are in for a postcard perfect day, both with 19 degrees. Down to Dunedin, it'll be cold tonight, dropping to 4 degrees, then mostly fine and sunny tomorrow with breezy northeasterlies. By numbers, expect a high of 15 and a low of 5 degrees. Into the weekend, Saturday looks almost like a carbon copy, uh, up to 15 and down to 5. Into Invercargill, cold again tonight, down to 3 degrees. Tomorrow and Saturday will be fine and sunny with light northerlies. Friday's high will be 16 and down to 4, while Saturday's a degree warmer at both ends of the day, up to 17 and down to 5 degrees as the low. And that's the news this Thursday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. Nō rera, kia pai te po, ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.